Mother, why did Daddy switch to Postum? Your father says there's no caffeine in Postum. Nothing to spoil your sleep. And your father knows best. <laughs> Transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young, his father. A half-hour visit with your neighbor, the Andersons. Brought to you by Instant Postum, the good-tasting drink that's entirely caffeine-free. And by Post 40% Bran Flakes, America's largest-selling Bran Flakes. Most families, the Andersons of 607 Maple Street, generally stick pretty closely together. But they have a day every now and then when the family structure threatens to come unglued. This, I'm afraid, is going to be one of those days. It's Saturday afternoon, and Jim Anderson is just coming in the back door. Like this. Margaret, I'm home. Mother, I'll need this skirt crest, too, and my organdy dress... Oh, yes, and my gray suit. Betty, and... I'm working as fast as I can. Don't rush me. What's going on here? I'll have to take all my blouses, too, and my Hello, Father sweaters, and let's see, what else? <laughs> take your blouses where? What's happening? Oh, Father, I have the most wonderful news. Really? What is it? Mother, all my hair curlers are bent or broken. Say, that is startling news. <laughs> So I'll just buy some new ones when I get there. When you get where? What's all this about? Is it a big secret? Oh, no, Father. It's just utterly devastating. That's all. Utterly. I see. Well, it's nice to get the details. <laughs> What's this all about, Margaret? Oh, she's going to take a job. A job? Really? Yes, Father. I'm moving to Cedar Falls. I'm going to stay with Janie Liggett's aunt. Mother, do you think I ought to take my record player? Mm, that's up to you. Now, wait a minute here. Did you say moving? Yes, Father. I don't think I'll take the record player. Or maybe I should. You mean you're, you're, you're leaving? Of course. Yes, but... Uh... Don't look at me, dear. It isn't my idea. I've got to start packing. What happened to my green blouse? Well, it's probably in your closet. Margaret, did you hear what she said? Yes, I heard it. Moving to Cedar Falls. Are you going to let her? Well, I didn't say she couldn't. And you always tell me I should go along with these things. Let the children work out their own problems. Yes, but she's not through college yet. She can't just quit in the middle of the term like this. Well, I don't agree with it either, but this opportunity came up. As a matter of fact, it came through the placement bureau at the college. So they evidently approve of it. They said she could continue her studies by extension. Well, what kind of a job is this? Oh, some sort of secretarial work, I guess. It's with some company there in Cedar Falls. With some company? Is that all you know about it? Oh, I'm sure it's a reputable firm. Well, how do you know? You don't even know the name of it. Sounds like some fly-by-night deal to me. Daddy! I don't think we ought to rush into this thing. Daddy! I'm walking in high heels. Look, Daddy! Oh, Kathy, take those ugly shoes off. <coughs> Where did you get those? They're some of Mommy's. Oh. Well, the shoes are all right, but it's just they don't look right on you. Look, Daddy, I can stand straight up without bending my knees. Well, take them off. I don't like to see little girls hobbling around in high heels. You children grow up too fast as it is without pushing it. Betty's leaving, the family's breaking up. Now, don't get upset, dear. That's what you tell me. You say take it easy, things always work out. Watch how fast I can walk in these, Daddy. Kathy, I told you to take those off before you trip and hurt yourself. I won't trip. I've been practicing. Look, Daddy. Do you think uh, Betty'll come home for weekends? Daddy, you're not looking. Kathy, I told you to get those things off before you break a leg. Hey, a fella can't do anything around here. Dear, I know you're upset over Betty, but I don't think you ought to take it out on Kathy. I wasn't. I meant what I said. I don't want her to trip and hurt herself. Oh, I don't think there's much danger of that. Besides, if she falls down a few times, she'll stop wearing them. I know, I know. I don't get this sudden change. What happened to your let things work out naturally theory? I don't recall that I ever espoused any such theory. Ma! Jim, dear, ever since the children were born, you've See, always... Mom, can I... Oh, hello, Dad. You home? <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
No, I'm on a live bait boat out in Puget Sound. <laughs> Say, Dad, how would you like to have me bring home a big sack of owls? A sack of owls? Now, just what would we do with a sack of owls? Claude Mesner says they're valuable. You, you can sell the feathers. You don't say. For money. My son, a feather merchant. <laughs> owl feathers yet. Joe Phillips and Claude and me are going owl trapping tonight. Oh, you are, huh? Well, that is, uh, if it's all right with you. Daddy! Well, but I'm wondering if it's a good idea for you boys to... Daddy! All right, shrimp boat, get lost. Me and Dad are talking business. Ah, oh, turn blue. <laughs> the road, squeegee. I don't have to, do I, Daddy? Well... Can I ask you a question, Daddy? All right, what is it, kitten? Holy cow. Can I wear just one of these shoes? Kitten, look, I don't want you to think I'm being mean to you, but when I ask you to do something, remember that it's for your own good, so please do it. Oh, darn. Well, anyway, Dad, me and Joe and Claude... Mother, do you know where my good hairbrush is? Oh, gosh. Where have you looked for it? It's not there. Well, which one do you mean, the black one? Ask Kathy if she took it. Uh, why don't you take the white one? Never mind, I'll find it. <laughs> Now, there's an intelligent conversation. <laughs> well, anyway, Dad, Claude's dad said he'd drive us out as far as Red Rock Bridge, and then we'll hike the rest of the way in. Carry our sleeping bags and all that. Sleeping bags? Sure, we don't want to sleep on the bare ground. Well, is this an overnight trip? Oh, sure. Can I go? Well, but in the first place, I don't like the idea of you boys out there chasing owls, getting caught in those traps. We don't use traps. We sneak up on them in the dark with a net. Yeah, well, if anybody sees you out there chasing owls, they'll be after you with a net. <laughs> There's no danger of that. It'll be dark. And in the second place, isn't it pretty cold to be camping out in sleeping bags? What if you get caught in a snowstorm? Oh, heck, Dad, it's not going to snow. No, but it could. Oh, Dad. You can feel it in the air. Oh, I'll look up the weather report in the paper. Oh, you can't go by that. Well, look, Daddy, if it says no snow, can I go? Here's my suit, Mother. It won't need much pressing. All right. How about it, Dad? Did you find the black hairbrush, Betty? I was hunting for the white one. Oh. Well, did you find the white one? No, but I found the black one. <laughs> How about it, Dad? Well, but I think I explained my position quite clearly. Holy cow. I knew it'd turn out like this. Father. Well, now wait, bud. Might as well be living in a concentration camp. <laughs> Father. Yes, what is it, Princess? I hate to ask you this, and I'll pay it back as soon as I get my first paycheck. But I'll need some money for the bare necessities. Rent and meals and movies and phonograph records and... Well, now, Betty, are you sure you know what you're doing? Why, certainly, Father. Well, what about this outfit you're going to work for? Doesn't sound very reliable to me. Now, dear, we've gone all through that. Well, I'm not convinced. Father, do you know the company I'm going to work for? No, I don't even know the name of it. Then how do you know it's unreliable? Well, I... Well, from some of the things your mother was telling me about it, fly by night and all that. Dear, you said that, not me. I didn't tell you anything about it because I don't know anything about it. See there? Nobody knows anything about this company. <laughs> Well, I do. I know all about it. It's the William T. Ripple Company. Ripple? And they manufacture. Manufacture what? Well, how should I know? <laughs> I'm only going to work in the office. I'm not going to be out in the factory punching a conveyor belt or whatever they do. <laughs> well, that settles it. You're not going to do anything until I investigate this outfit and find out just what kind of shenanigans they're mixed up in. Jim, if you don't want Betty to leave, just come right out and say so. Oh, no, it's not that. I don't want to stand in her way. Dad. But I certainly feel it's my duty. Dad, can I go if I wear my red flannels? <laughs> well, don't bother me about that now. Holy cow. Well, Father, I've already said I'd take the job. But you don't even know what it is. And Ralph is going to drive me over to Cedar Falls. Well, now, wait. Let me finish what I was going to say. Father, I should think you'd be overjoyed that your daughter is going to start making $95 a week. $95 a week? Well, that must be a month. <laughs> 
They wouldn't pay a beginner that much. It's a week, I'm positive. Dad. Betty, listen, I'm only trying to help you. Dad. Father, I talked to the man myself. Dad. <laughs> All right, what is it, bud? How about it if I wear two pair of red flannels? <laughs> bud, I told you I didn't want you to go, and that's that. If you were older, it would be different. I'm older than I was last year. Betty, here's your suit. Thanks. Looks like I won't need it now, the way Father's talking. Well, Betty, now please listen. As I said, I don't want to stand in your way. But on the other hand, I certainly feel it's my duty to investigate this company before I let my daughter walk into some shaky enterprise she'll regret later on. Shaky? Dear, quoting your theory of the past, I think it would be good experience for her. Margaret, I wish you wouldn't keep bringing up my theories. Before she leaves this house, I'm going to make a few phone calls. Father, there's no one you can call now. It's Saturday afternoon. Every place is closed till Monday. I can't help that. I'm going to find out more about this. What is it, the uh, Dribble Company? Ripple, William T. Mother, what am I going to do? Well, I'll go have a talk with your father. But I'll be truthful with you. It doesn't look too promising. Mother, what does he think I am, a child? Well, I'll see what I can do. Bud. Yeah? I want to talk to you. What have I done now? Nothing. It's what you're not getting to do that I want to talk about. What's going on? Get lost, shrimp. I think it's high time we took drastic measures. Can I take them, too? <laughs> All right. Sit down, Squeegee, but be quiet. We are going to have a meeting. A meeting? The way things have been going around here, the way we're all being treated like infants has got to stop. We've got to assert ourselves. Huh? We, the United Andersons, are going to revolt. So the Anderson children are going to revolt because they aren't being treated like grown-ups. <laughs> well... Maybe you have the same kind of problem at your home. If you have, here's a suggestion from our child care expert, Ed Prentice. Well, I guess just about every youngster likes to act and feel as grown up as possible. Why? I don't know. Personally, I'd rather be a kid myself. But anyway, that's how they want to be. And, well, here's one way, a perfectly safe and easy way to let them. Sure, let them enjoy Postum, the grown-up drink that's completely safe for the whole family. Let them have their hot postum right along with you, even little toddlers. You see, instant postum satisfies their yearning for a good, hot, grown-up drink, yet contains absolutely nothing to harm them. No caffeine, no drugs of any kind. And say, you know, that's something for us grown folks to remember particularly those of us who suffer sleepless nights or jangled nerves due to the caffeine in coffee and tea. Of course, not everybody's affected that way by caffeine. Many aren't. But if you are, why not make caffeine-free Postum your steady drink? Instant Postum for you and the kids, too. You'll all enjoy it. Tastes mighty good and heartening. That's Instant Postum. Get a jar tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Revolt is on at 607 Maple Street as the amalgamated Anderson kids assert themselves and establish right in such momentous issues as one, stumbling around in high heel shoes, two, taking a job in Cedar Falls, and three, going owl trapping. While this meeting is in progress, self appointed mediator Margaret is having her little discussion with Jim, who is acting under what he considers basic parental duty. Like this. Honey, I understand all that perfectly, but I still say that I'd be a poor parent indeed if I didn't check into this job of Betty's. But you can't do anything about it now. You called over to Cedar Falls and found out the place is closed till Monday. Now, why don't you just relax and let things work themselves out? I've got Ed Davenport down at the Chamber of Commerce checking on it for me. He'll find out something. Oh, dear, you know how these things go. If you don't fight it, something always comes up and, and it's all forgotten. Margaret, you can't just sit by and trust to luck. 
that he's too young, too inexperienced to take off like this. Jim, Cedar Falls is all of 35 miles away. Why, she doesn't even know what the company manufactures. If they're making a legitimate product, why are they keeping it so quiet? They're not keeping it quiet. Betty just forgot to find out what it is. I'd better find out exactly who it was who got this job for Betty. She told you it was the college place. Where, is she still in the kitchen? I think so. All the children are in there, with the door closed. I don't know what they're doing. It was probably Ralph who promoted this whole thing. Sounds like his work. Yeah, and then he says snow, says it's going to snow. Budge. Well, what's going on here? Oh, uh, uh, hello, Dad. Father, you can't come in here. I can't? No. We're having a meeting. Oh, what kind of a meeting? Oh, just a meeting. Hi, Daddy. We'll let you know about it later. Guess what, Daddy? We're revolting. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. <laughs> yes, we are, Daddy. You'll find out. Kathy, keep quiet. And, Father, you've got to leave till the meeting's over. I see. Well, I guess I know when I'm not wanted. But hurry it up, because there's some things I want to ask you, Madam Chairman. You'll get your chance to talk, Father. Well, fine. I'll look forward to it. Goodbye, Daddy. I'm leaving. Don't worry. <laughs> well, did you find out anything? Plenty. There's a big deal going on in the kitchen. <laughs> Sounds like mutiny. Mutiny? Yes, they're having a big meeting, and from what little I could pick up, I'm the principal target of their attack. What are they saying? Well, I didn't get very much of it, but I think if I open the door just a crack... Oh, now, Jim, you're not going to eavesdrop. Well, this concerns me. It might be very interesting. Well, I'm not going to listen. And then on top of that, now get this, Betty. All right, you registered your complaint now. You don't need to go into any more of it. The point well, is... let me tell this. I even offered to wear two pair of red flannels. <laughs> Daddy says I can't walk in these shoes. Look how good I can do it, Betty. Get that, honey? Shh. Kathy, you've demonstrated a hundred times. Now sit down. Not old enough, he says. The point is that we're all agreed that we've got to do something about Father. Right? Right. They just decided they've got to do something about me. <laughs> I don't blame them. Our main complaint is that Father has failed to keep up with us and with the time. Yeah. His trouble is that he's just too utterly Model T. <laughs> you can say that again. Yeah. He thinks we're still living back in the 1940s. The 1940s? <laughs> I thought you weren't going to listen. Well, I just happened to catch that. So our next step is to draw up a resolution and present it to him, right? Right. A New Year's resolution? No, a resolution telling him what changes we want made and what we intend to do. And that from now on, we want to be treated as adults instead of babies. After all, we're old enough to know a thing or two. You're doggone right. Yeah. I know a heck of a lot more about trapping owls than he does. <laughs> all right. You kids keep quiet now, and I'll draw up the resolution. Okay. Bud, do you want to see me walk in these shoes? No. They're drawing up a resolution now. I'll bet that's going to be a world-shaking document. I should be in there helping them write it. No, I think they'll do a good job. And outside of the things they said about me, their other statements make a lot of sense. As near as I could tell, the only statements they made were about you. <laughs> well, what I mean is... Uh, oh, that's probably Ed Davenport calling back. I hate to interrupt the meeting, but I guess I'll have to barge into the kitchen to answer it. There's an extension, you know, in the den. Oh, yeah, that's right. Dad! Huh? Oh, what are you doing here behind the door? Oh, uh, nothing. I uh, was just talking to your mother for a second. Oh. Well, you're wanted on the phone. Oh, well, thanks. Come in, but make it snappy, Dad. Yes, sir. Yeah, make it snappy, Daddy. Oh, I will. I won't take a chance with this gang. Hello. Oh, hello, Ed. What did you find out? You're right, Betty. That's where he was. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. You're sure about that? Uh-huh. Well, much obliged, Ed. Maybe we can have lunch sometime next week. Fine. Goodbye. Is the uh, meeting about over? No. Nope. We'll tell you when. Yeah, we'll tell you when, Daddy. I shall await it with eager anticipation. Was it Ed? Yes, it was Ed. 
Well, what do you have to say? Oh, we had some information on the Ripple Company. They, uh, they manufacture leather goods. Well, that doesn't sound very shaky. Well, as far as he could tell, they're a good, reliable outfit. Well, don't get worried, dear. Let's just play along and see what happens. Margaret, I can't understand your complete lack of interest. Dear, I'm only repeating what you yourself have said. Okay, so... Okay, Dad, you can come in now. Oh, well, good. May I come in, too? Uh, I don't know. Uh, just a minute. Betty, is it okay if Mom comes, too? Yes, I guess so. Okay, Mom, come on in. Thank you very kindly. Father, you sit right there. Here? Okay. <laughs> Where do I sit? Really? Where? It doesn't matter. Hi, Mommy. Hello, Kathy. I bet you're glad you're not Daddy. <laughs> All right, let's have order in here. Mr. James Anderson. That's me. <laughs> we, as a committee of three, have drawn a resolution which we are utterly desirous of reading to you. And I'm utterly desirous of hearing say. <laughs> All right, here it is. We, Betty Anderson, Bud Anderson, and Kathy Anderson, do hereby resolve as follows. Hi, Daddy. Keep quiet, Jughead. <laughs> Whereas we have reached varying ages, as the case may be, we feel that it is utterly high time that we were treated accordingly. Know what that means, Daddy? I don't. Stay <laughs> quiet. Whereas we feel quite capable of figuring a few things out for ourselves and making a few of our own decisions, we hereby intend to take the following courses of action. Yeah. May I have a drink of water? No. What about me first? <laughs> Number one. I, Kathy Anderson, do hereby intend to wear whatever type footwear at various times and on various occasions as I so please. I got them on right now. See, Daddy? Uh-huh. Number two. I, Bud Anderson, do hereby intend not to be prevented or restrained from going owl trapping by utterly spurious weather reports about snow and etc. And furthermore, I do not intend to wear two suits of red flannels either inside the sleeping bag or outside. <laughs> Number three, I, Betty Anderson, being of sound mind and practically grown up, do hereby... I know, I know. Do hereby utterly insist that I'm going to Cedar Falls. For the purpose of making $95 a week. Never mind reading the rest of it, Princess. Where are you going, Father? I'm hauling down my flag and retreating to the den. <laughs> then it's okay to go out traffic? Sure, go ahead. Now, oh, dear, just a minute. I know when I'm outnumbered, Margaret. Then it's all right to take the job, Father? Sure, go to Cedar Falls, make $95 a week, it's your life. I'm not going to interfere. Can I wear Mommy's shoes? I don't care, kid. Wear stilts if you want to. <laughs> Dear, you don't have to give in to everything. What are you going to do? Honey, I'm just going to sit here in the den and lick my wounds. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't take that attitude, Jim. No, honey. You said to just relax and let things work out. I'm going to follow your theory this time. My theory? You've been telling me this all afternoon. Now I'm going to do it. But I'm not going to be responsible for what happens. Let the family fall apart. Oh, dear. Well, hadn't you better answer the phone? Why answer it? I'm going to relax and let things work out. <laughs> Maybe it'll stop ringing. Aren't you going to answer the phone, Dad? No, it's probably for Betty anyway. Hello? Yes? Who? Oh, well, just a minute. Betty, it's for you. Who is it, Ralph? No, it's some guy by the name of Masterson or something like that. Oh, that's the man at the placement bureau. It's about my job. Margaret, when do things start working out? Dear, I didn't say that Hello? they were going to... Yes, this is she. What? Switchboard training. No, I haven't had any of that. Mine's been mostly shorthand and typing and all that. Gee, I don't even know what a leather stamping machine is. Well, uh, Mr. Masterson, couldn't I just take the secretarial part of it and maybe take less pay than the 95 a week? What? A month? Oh, uh, you hear that, Margaret? Shh. Well, I guess you'd better tell them I won't take it. Thank you, Mr. Masterson. Goodbye. <sighs> 
Uh, for instance, I was just thinking, I'll bet Ed Davenport down at the Chamber of Commerce could use a good girl in his office this summer. After school's out. Father, you were right. It was 95 a month. Yeah. Well, I'll talk to Ed next week. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have lunch with him. Well, Dad, Joe and Claude are expecting me over at Joe's house, and I, I ought to... Holy cow, look out the window. Father, do you really think Mr. Davenport... Holy jumping cow! What's the matter, Bud? I never would have believed it. Believe what? Look, it's snowing. <laughs> Joe and tell him the trip's off. Tell him to bring his skis and come on over. I'll be upstairs unpacking, Mother. Well, dear, what do you say now? Well, honey, it's like I've always said. If you just relax, give these things time, they always work out. <laughs> For goodness sake, eat post bran flakes. So good and so good for you. Mother, it's important to know that a good for you cereal also has a delicious flavor that the whole family will love. And that's exactly what the post cereal people have done for bran. Yes, they have given their new post 40% bran flakes a wonderful new magic oven flavor, a tempting crisper texture that many people now prefer over any other cereal. And besides tasting good, Post Bran Flakes are good for you because they give you those important keep regular benefits that Bran is famous for. So next time you go shopping, be sure to buy new Post 40% Bran Flakes, America's largest selling Bran Flakes. They're really good and so good for you. Revolt on Maple Street is now little more than a memory. And the activities in the white frame house have settled back into such earthy routine tasks as preparing dinner, which Margaret is doing at this very moment. Jim is just entering the kitchen to check on its progress. Like this. Mmm, that smells good. When do we eat? No, oh, it won't be long now. Have you checked on Kathy lately? Yeah, she's abandoned your shoes in the front hall. <laughs> at this moment, she's outdoors playing fox and geese in the snow with Bud. Oh, my. Jim, tell me truthfully, how did you know it was going to snow? Oh, just naturally brilliant, I guess. <laughs> no, not tell me. Well, after an intensive study of the pressure areas... Father! And... Oh, hello, Princess. Father, I've just torn up that resolution and drawn up a new one. Oh? This one says we're sorry for the way we acted and that we all realize that, well, that... You know best. Well, Betty, I wish you were right, but uh, you're not. I was just lucky. Lucky? Yes, but uh, I think I've learned a good lesson today. I've learned I have some pretty self-reliant grown-up kids. And from now on, maybe your father will be a little less, uh, shall we say, Model T. <laughs> week and we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Post 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest selling brand flakes, and Instant Postum, a drink that's entirely caffeine free. In our cast were Helen Strom as Kathy, Dorothy Lovett, Rhoda Williams, and Ted Donaldson. It's the best hot cereal you ever ate. Post Wheat Meal, the best hot cereal anybody ever ate. Rich and delicious with a nut-like flavor you never want to miss. And hot post wheat meal is so good for you. Packed full of solid whole wheat nourishment, especially good for children. Post wheat meal takes just three minutes to cook. Get the big family economy size with a picture of Roy Rogers on the package. Post wheat meal. The best hot cereal you ever ate. <laughs> Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Tonight, 
Play Truth or Consequences on NBC.